Judy Woodruff sat down with President Clinton today in New York. President Clinton, thank you very much for talking with us. Glad to do it, Judy. So we're talking on the eve of the Clinton Global Initiative, where the focus is once again on jobs. This latest jobs report last week, disappointing, only 69,000 jobs created across the country. The unemployment rate is up. Doesn't that seriously undercut President Obama's efforts to say that things are moving in the right direction? Well, it means it's something he needs to talk to the American people about. But to me, it doesn't for two or three reasons. One is, I think that the jobs creation is slowed down, partly because maybe we were a little robust in the winter, because we had a warm winter, and maybe that's given a slower spring. But the big factors are Europe, which is like casting a pall over everything, all this trouble in Europe, where unemployment is three points higher in the Eurozone than it is here. And it slowed down growth in India, China, and Brazil, too, as well as here. Uh, that's the first thing. Secondly, I think that the government has real ability to generate employment through infrastructure investments and aid to state and local governments. But the Congress won't pass a jobs plan. And we've had, in the last 27 months, 4.3 million new private sector jobs, but we've lost 600,000 public jobs because we didn't continue what the stimulus had done there. And then the third thing is, we're still working out of this housing thing. If we could accelerate the rate, and it does seem to be picking up now, accelerate the rate in which all these mortgage issues are resolved, then I think you would see, uh, particularly on the part of small businesses, a lot more borrowing, a lot more investment, a lot more activity. But if, if, if there are three or four months like this last one where the jobs report is 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 so is, is moving down. Um, some people are saying the president's goose is cooked politically. I don't agree with that. I think for one thing, he would be in trouble if that happened, and the Congress had passed his whole jobs plan. But they didn't, and they are explicitly advocating, and so is Governor Romney an approach that looks like the approach the Europeans are trying to get out of, which is austerity first, which drives up unemployment and, interestingly enough, drives the government deficit up. And he says, let's grow now and adopt a 10-year budget plan that drives the budget down. They're saying, let's have austerity now and adopt a 10-year budget plan, which, according to all the independent analysis, was actually add a trillion or two dollars to the debt because of their big tax cuts. So, I think he'd really just got to talk to the American people and trust them with the truth here. This is a very complicated thing. If you go back 500 years, the average financial collapse takes five to 10 years to get over, to get back to full employment, full employment. If there's a mortgage collapse, which we've had for the last couple of hundred years periodically, it's closer to 10 years. What he's trying to do is to beat that. The American people or they want things done the day before yesterday, so they don't like to wait 10 years to do anything, and there's too much misery out there. I would say he's on track to beat that pretty quickly, uh, by quite a lot. But th there's a great debate about this, and you've given it a lot of thought, but what is more important when it comes to job creation? Is it lowering tax rates, or is it government investment? When there is almost zero private activity and no demand for money, interest rates are virtually nothing. The interest rate on a government 10-year bond yesterday was a quarter of a percent. If you assume inflation is at 2%, that means somebody that buys a million dollars in government bonds is paying the government to keep their money. I mean, it, it's amazing. And under these circumstances, it's more important that the government gen up activity and put people to work. And especially if you can attract private capital, which we could with that infrastructure bank proposal that has Republican and Democrat support. But is that going to be workable, President Clinton, with this European debt crisis overhang that you've just been talking about? Yes, because the German interest rates, believe it or not, are even lower than ours. But what will happen is, that's what the Europeans are trying to do. They're trying to figure out, number one, how can we avoid a bank run in the vulnerable countries? Greece is a special case where they don't have a good tax system and hardly anybody pays what they're supposed to or anything like that. But 
the Spanish had a government budget surplus before their real estate collapse. So the Europeans are thinking we probably better do something to improve the security of the banks. An individual deposit is insured 100,000 euros. In America, it's now $250,000. So maybe they'll take it up some and do some other things to stabilize the banks. Then if they can put together a euro bond that is backed by the biggest economies, it'll be at very low interest rates too. And that's what they're talking about doing, moving away from austerity now to growth now. You cannot balance a budget without three things. You have to have economic growth, spending restraint, and an appropriate revenue stream. You can argue about the last two, but the first is clear. If you look at what happened in the UK when they tried austerity first, it didn't balance the budget because no matter how much you cut, if there's no private activity, revenues are going to drop more than you cut spending. But you're saying there's an urgent situation urgent. in Europe right now. It's urgent in Europe, and I think they have 30 to 50 days to fix it, and I think they're and they just need to send a signal out there if they, they calm things down and then we can increase activity here, I think, you know, we'll get through this. Just one question about Governor Romney and the campaign. You praised his business experience last week, his record. Uh, you said he passed the threshold test. I guess my question is, how do those skills that he picked up as a, as a private sector executive at Bain Capital, how do they translate in terms of job creation into being president? I think they have much more to do with the way you sort of manage the White House and the style you'd have. I don't think they necessarily have any relevance at all to creating jobs. Um, they might if the macroeconomics is right. But, but if, you, if you look at the economic plan that he's advanced, in my opinion, it's wrong on two counts, wrong in the short term, wrong in the long run. In the short run, it calls for austerity now, which means more unemployment. And in the long run, it calls for tax cuts so big with unspecified savings that every independent analyst says it'll add a trillion or two to the debt. So I don't think it, business experience does not guarantee success. I don't think that saying that I was in business and I succeeded, therefore I'd be a good president on the economy. It just doesn't follow. There's no evidence of it. Is the Obama campaign wrong to continue to criticize Romney's record at Bain Capital? Not necessarily. It depends on the facts of the case. That's what I tried to say in the CNN interview. Uh, the equity business can be good if you buy, I've got a friend who buys failing companies and he tries to turn them around and he's turned a bunch of them around, but not all of them. So sometimes he tried and failed. The effort was honorable. That's a good thing. There are lots of examples over the last 20 years where people used equity to take control of companies got the companies in greater debt, looted the assets, caused more people to be fired, and in some cases, compromised the pensions. That's a bad thing. That's when you're just, you're buying something and looting it because you can. I didn't have any idea when I was given that answer that I was wading into some controversy in the campaign because I haven't seen the ads and I'm not following it and I'm not really part of it. But you'd have to know about a specific case to know whether it was a good or a bad thing. But there are a lot of good people in that business doing good things. That's the point I was making. But it's much more relevant to look at what he did as governor and what he proposes to do as president. Last thing, money in this campaign. We've heard from the Romney folk, people supporting Mitt Romney, it's gonna, they're going to spend a billion dollars or more. In this election, we expect President Obama's side to spend almost that much, if not that much. Is that the kind of campaign we just have to get used to from now on? You could argue that $2 billion is not too much to spend for an economy that's over $15 trillion. I personally think it's unnecessary, particularly when you're running for president. We're going to know who they are. They could do five debates instead of three, for example, or whatever they're going to do, and do that. I don't like it because once you get past the informational stage, you get that much money, it's basically being used to target specific audiences with carefully tailored negative messages 
that confuse the issue. But the Supreme Court has said that we can't limit it. So unless we're prepared to overturn the Citizens United case, we're probably not going to do anything about it. And, but I think it's too much. President Clinton, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you. Online, you can watch more of Judy's interview and read the full transcript, including what President Clinton said about declaring China a currency manipulator.